Sadhguru, welcome to Times Now. We are speaking at a very critical juncture. It's a time that is very important for relations between the Hindu and the Muslim community in this country in the backdrop of uh, the long case, the long running case, I may add, with regards to the Ram Janam Bhumi title dispute. You've probably been hearing the arguments uh, or at least uh, you are conversant with the reports in the newspapers. Uh, what do you make of this case? See, it should not have come uh, this far. It's very difficult for any jury to take a call on this. So right now, what is a, a highly emotional issue, they're trying to handle it as a real estate issue. Uh, which, whichever way they give a judgment, somebody will be unhappy. But at the same time, we need to understand if it's real estate, uh, even within a family, between two brothers, if there's division, one will always feel it's unjust. So one thing is, because every other mode of trying to settle this problem unfortunately has failed, it's best that whatever the judgment uh, we are able to uh, go by that, everybody concerned. It's very, very important because because this problem, as you said, has persisted from 1500s, 1528, <laughs> since then it's gone on. The problem here is just this, there is no more a question of whether there was a temple or not. There is substantial evidence uh, to show there was a temple. And uh, above all, it was, it was the nature of those days that the invaders who came, they thought uh, they are uh, doing a jihad. Babur definitely believed that he's a, doing a jihad and uh, he did not think he was doing anything wrong when he destroys the idols of this nation because idolatry was considered a very bad thing to do according to them. It is very important that today's Muslim community does not identify with those uh, people. It's very important. At the same time, it's very important that the Hindu community also do not identify the present generation of Muslims with the atrocities of the past. This is very important. Then the problem becomes very simple as to how to handle it. Right now, this onerous task has been given, but it's a very good thing it's coming to some sort of conclusion because kicking the can to the next generation is not an answer, which is what we have done for a very long time. It is very important on various levels, we are making this effort right now because people have given such a huge mandate to this government because they want them to solve problems. Problems which are an impediment for the development of this nation, for the future of this nation. Sovereignty issues, citizenship issues, these temple mosque issues, everything must be settled in our generation so that future generations who live in this nation don't have to live with these endemic problems. There will be other issues to handle for them, but not these endemic issues of the past. Very interesting, because some people are saying that all these issues tie in with a majoritarian sort of agenda that is being pushed by this government. How do you respond to those people? See, uh, there is a small group of people and they are not even Muslims. Those people are always trying to ferment problems. If you look at uh, the whole history of uh, Babri Masjid case or the Ayodhya Ram Temple case, whichever way you want to call it, in the last 40-45 years, which is the, uh, if we can say, there's some attempts to find solution, you will see when responsible archaeologists clearly produce evidence, definitely there was a grand temple out here. When one level of uh, excavation or without excavation, when there were standing columns, twelve columns standing in the mosque with uh, all kinds of uh, Hindu motifs, when this evidence was produced, they said this is not good enough. And Allahabad the High Court ordered uh, one more excavation in 2003. This excavation uh, unearthed 50 columns in 17 different rows, clearly showing there was a very grand temple out there before this. So, evidence is substantial, it's just a handful of uh, people who are professors and who call themselves professors and scholars who are not even archaeologists, who have misguided the whole nation and made this into a Hindu-Muslim issue. 
This is not that kind of a issue. Unfortunately, they have managed to divide the country on this, it's time. These people are not empowered in any way to talk further about this. It's very important the nation speaks clearly that we want solutions, we don't want to kick the problems for tomorrow and hope they will go away. They will not go away like that. We have to see… address them head on and come to a solution. Everybody, whatever solution we come to, there will be some give and take, somebody feels loss, somebody sure. feels gain. But considering the nature of this problem, see, for… Uh, for Islam, this Babri Masjid does not represent Muhammad or any of his legacy. Hmm. It represents Babar. So definitely the Islamic community should not identify themselves with the legacy of Baba because then all the atrocities also will come upon their heads. They should not do this. But for the Hindus, the emotion is that this is the place of uh, Rama who is the icon. Maybe uh, Rama is not such a big icon in the south, but in the northern communities uh, where uh, millions of people, for them it is the ultimate place. In a way, if we have to uh, draw parallels, for a whole lot of devotees who worship Rama, who is the icon for them, for them this is the Makkah of India. So, there is no need to quarrel about 2.77 acres. Is it worth quarreling for five centuries? It's very interesting. You seem to put the onus uh, on the masjid side to drive towards a resolution or a solution. Uh, but uh, their councils have been arguing in the courts that Ayodhya dispute would have been settled long back if it was accepted that Ram was not born under the central dome. This is what Rajiv Dhawan has said uh, in court. How do you look upon this particular line of argument? See, Nobody even knows where our grandfather was born, all right, exact spot. The important thing is, Rama was born in Ayodhya and they say that was the place. Millions of people believe that is the place. Whether he was born there or ten feet away or hundred feet away from that place, what does it matter? What kind of argument is that? This is because certain number of people in this country, which is a, fortunately a small group, thrive on problems. They want to find problems in every solution. It is time we find solutions in every problem. There is a problem, we must find a solution. The judgment is nearby, we must respect this and go ahead. And above all, I think in many ways, you know, the… Uh, the responsible Muslim community, which I feel is over ninety-five percent of them are like that, it's only a fringe elements. Fringe elements are there in both communities. Ignore the fringe elements. If you take the responsible community, then you will see this… this emotion towards 2.77 acres mm -hmm. is not there in them. They yeah. will be willing to settle and above all, in a way, before the judgment comes, if they take a step, because this is a historic moment, if they want to grab this history into their hands as they were the most responsible people, before the judges come out with their judgment, they should make a statement, hey, Muslims of this nation make a statement, okay, it means so much to you, you do it. The question is not about Hindu versus Muslim. The question is, for one person the emotion is uh, super important, for another person it's just a piece of property. So tell me where the solution should come from, otherwise the judgment will come and even if the judgment comes, we can continue this problem. All I'm saying is do not continue this problem, let us focus on addressing genuine problems that we have. We don't have to create new problems. India has many problems of nourishment, of poverty, of… Uh, you know, various problems are there. Instead of addressing that, we are just creating problems and uh, playing football with that. It's very interesting because <clears throat> some people argue that the exact site of birth is at the core of this case. Now, you've said that we all know that he was born in Ayodhya, so what does it… what different does it make whether he was born… Uh, under the central dome or not. But the courts go into such minutiae, uh, Sadhguru, because law cannot take a position on emotion. That's what the purists will tell you. That's why… that's what people familiar with the law will tell you. What do you have to say to those people who say that, look, no one denies that Lord Rama was born in Ayodhya. Uh, the dispute would have been settled had the Hindus accepted that he wasn't born under the central dome, <laughs> in that exact spot. See, if the debate 
and the problem was that both Ram and Muhammad were born close by, within hundred feet of each other. And then we are debating whether this is Muhammad's place of birth or Ram's place of birth, that would have been a real problem. Now Muhammad was born a thousands of miles away and Ram was born here. If Ram was born hundred feet away from the dome, what is your problem? That should not even be the line of argument. I would say this kind of thing is coming because you don't want a solution. Because a whole lot of people are using this problem as an investment to build their own political futures or whatever else they're planning. So if you look at the way they discredited the archaeological survey of India, whatever evidence they came up with, these few so-called uh, scholars or, uh, you know, <laughs> professors from certain universities who went about doing this, if you look at that, it is very clear they had their own personal agendas. They were not interested in the evidence. Going by the evidence, definitely there is a temple. Ram born there or not there, you can debate forever, it's over six thousand years ago, nobody can geographically fix it, all right? You can't put a Google dot on it, but was there a temple? One hundred percent, everybody knows this. Now, is there so much emotion in the uh, Islamic community about it? No, they just feel wronged that the mosque was brought down. So now when they know, in the history a certain wrong was there, somebody is trying to write it, you can't go on rejigging history, Hindus also must understand this. This one thing, there is so much emotion, it's come so far and this could be a big impediment for nation's development. In some way we must come to a solution. Even when the court gives a judgment, it's very important, once again we don't go into two-thirds belongs to somebody, one-third belongs to somebody, again there will be no solution. Some decisive solution should come, if we don't have the courage to take that step, we will only kick the problem to the next generation and that's not the way to handle things. Let me ask you, sir, mm -hmm. um, there's always a winner or a loser in a court case. Do you believe that the Hindu side should be given, uh, without any ambiguity, the entire title in this suit? Do you believe so? To avoid a conflict from perpetuating, as you've said, to the next generations. See, we need to understand this. Uh, in 1855, there was a terrible riot regarding the same issue. But in 1857, both Hindus and Muslims came together to fight what we call as the first war of independence. It is after that, the colonial design became such that if these two communities get together, they will be severely weakened. So the East India Company uh, put out a plan and uh, they came up with many, many uh, ways of dividing the two. One thing is they decided Muslims should get separate education and they must have a separate oath. They vote separately, Hindus vote separately. All these kind of laws they brought in just to divide the country. Let us not be a slave of that device today, after seventy years of independence. Let whatever you are in your heart, you may be a Hindu or a Muslim, let that be a personal faith, but we belong to one nation, it is important we want a solution. What is the solution, if you ask? Now you want me to spell out, uh, Rahul, that, oh, I support the Hindu community. No, I am not that kind. It is not about supporting the Hindu community or Islamic community. I want the impediments for the development of this nation to be gone. I am sure ninety-five percent of the country's population is with me on this one. Hmm. That they want the impediments for the development of this country to be gone in whatever form it is. So right now this is one of them, which has been a thorn, which has been bothering this nation for quite some time. So it should go. So. Can you move Ram out of Ayodhya and put him in Chennai? Is it possible? No. No. Not Because possible. he also came to Tamil Nadu. Can we say he was born here? It's not going to work. Hmm. So, obviously it's not going to work. So, let's do it the way it works. It's not the question of taking this side or that side. We want a solution not for Hindus, not for Muslims. We want a solution for the forward movement of this nation. Uh, so, what in your words would be the best solution to ensure that our nation progresses without impediments? 
uh, well, there were sovereignty issues, we are trying to settle that, there are citizenship issues, we are trying to settle that, there is uh, temple and mosque issues, we are trying to settle that, this is a good thing. See, the very idea that people have given a massive mandate to a particular uh, government is because they believe they are going to sort out the problems. Well, when we try to sort out the problems, will it happen in a perfect way? No. We must understand this, no human action is ever perfect. We may have perfect intentions, but when we execute something, it is never perfect. So those imperfections, somebody may per perceive as injustice. Let us keep this down for some time, let us understand. In this whole thing, what I see is, the main mischief has come from the colonial forces, and the second level of mischief has come from very L far left-leaning uh, kind of uh, scholars and professors. So, let us remind them that when we say Islam, we talk about Muhammad. Muhammad said, whole earth is a mosque for me. Can you talk… can you make a more inclusive statement than that? Please let the Muslims live by that. When we say Hindus, now they're talking about Ram. Rama is that kind of man. Just to… out of his integrity, he gives up his uh, uh, kingdom. He's a coronated king, but he walks away into the forest. And his wife is stolen, terrible things are done. But when he kills his enemy who stole his wife and did terrible things to the people, he repents having killed him. So that is the man you're fighting for, don't forget. And for the leftist, let them remember, all this conniving nonsense that they're doing everywhere, even today they're continuing like this. I want to remind them, they are not progeny of Joseph Stalin or Mao Tung. They are supposed to represent Karl Marx, who thought of an equitable society, a society without, uh, you know, disparities, a compassionate economy which will nurture every human being. This is what he represents. Please let all three remember this. Right now this fanning of uh, that, uh, you know, Hindu Muslims must fight, this whole thing is unfortunately not coming from Islamic community or largely from Hindu community. There are fringe elements on both sides, I'm not saying no. Hmm. But largely it is coming from left-leaning extremists. What is their interest in religion? They should not even be interested in religion. But they are always playing with this. I request all of them, please understand whom you represent. You represent Muhammad, you cannot do this. If you represent Ram, you cannot do this. If you represent Karl Marx, you cannot do this. So, left-leaning extremists. Now, the Prime Minister has come up with a term to describe some of them. He says that uh, they have occupied a vast influence over the minds of this country because they are located very close to the center of power. I mean, you can call it the Latian zone, you can call it the Khan market uh, consensus, what have you. Uh, but do you believe these individuals have a motivated interest or are they just ideologically driven to doing this? See, that is what I said, their ideology is about Karl Marx. Mm -hmm. They are motivated because unfortunately, they have understood this. When Marx envisioned communism, he thought richest nations will go for communism because he believed out of our humanity we will become communist. But right now, they have understood only if there is poverty, there will be communism. To convert people into communism, you need endemic poverty in this nation. So they are working towards that. They must be defeated because this is not good for the country. The country is striving to progress. People are striving to fulfill their aspirations and some people, their aspiration is in… based in poverty as a capital. Very interesting, very eye-opening and interesting. Uh, Sadhguru, I want to ask you that inevitably in a court case, there will be one winner and loser. I'm telling you, yeah. they're… they're… Yes. No, go ahead, go ahead. You were saying something, go ahead. No, I'm telling you how… F how far this goes means… How far this goes means, this is not just about temple and mosque. These same people are going about campaigning. If you plant lot of trees, it's dangerous for the country. How do you… <laughs> what do you say about that? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, 
Uh, there is obviously a massive debate raging in the country about the contribution of certain individuals. But I just want to take it away from that a little bit because your time is precious to us. Now, there will be a side that might go away feeling hard done, that injustice, to use the words that you used, have been done to them. How should they cope with this? Sh sh who should they turn to to deal with this sense of See, loss, if I, I think may? If, if they feel... What, whatever the court may say, I would advise, I would advise either the Uttar Pradesh government, if it is in their hands, or the central government, should do something to assuage their hurt, in whichever form they think is best. More than what is needed, they must do to ensure that they don't feel hurt. Do you think there should be a temporal… This is very important, because yeah. this is not one generation. So how should this how should this outreach it is not be a one generation's problem should it be through uh, what sort of resolution mechanism would you suggest see one thing is uh, i am not an expert or a scholar on islam but from what little i have known one thing that clearly states that a mosque cannot exist on a disputed land hmm. when mohammed speaks about a mosque he says it can be anywhere it can even be an open space but the only condition is it must be clean. Clean, not just physically clean, in every way clean. That means he, he is telling you that there should be no disputes about it. It must be a clean piece of land where we can assemble and seek God, of course. The highest possibility, whatever you believe in, you are trying to seek the highest possibility. So, in such a place, let us not, when there is such a big dispute and such negative emotion about it, and somebody has so much angst that their temple has been taken, I think even by the dictates of the religion, there is simply not necessary. Somebody should educate them in the right sense, rather than raking up and saying that uh, injustice has happened. Tell me how to do justice, divide it fifty-fifty. This is like the Solomon's wisdom, you know. He asked the people, two women claiming a child is theirs, he said, okay, let us cut it into two. Yes. Then the mother said, you take it. <laughs> I, I'm not going to cut my child into two. So, don't go by this uh, thing, this Solomon's wisdom, we must understand cutting it into pieces is not a solution. We must, uh, we must offer a solution which will be good for everybody, but there will be hurt, as you said, to assuage that, if not the… if uh, the court may just go by the law, they may not bother to assuage the hurt. The government should reach out and assuage the hurt, it's very important. The Hindu community should reach out and assuage the hurt, that is very important. You should not feel… you should not burst crackers and jump around and we won, we won, this should not happen in the country. Hmm. You must have the humility that Ram had, you must bow down to them, that's it. Beautiful words, yes. Beautiful words, no triumphalism. Let's demonstrate uh, the humility that Ram demonstrated, even in victory. Thank you very much, Sadhguru. Thank you, it's been a very productive conversation and I hope your message resounds.